I'm Billy Klein. I'm here in the River Street section of Patterson, and I'm standing in front of a mural of the Buffalo Soldiers. We're going to meet the artist next on Check It Out. Welcome back. I'm standing here with Bob Corr, the artist responsible for this mural of the Buffalo Soldiers. And Bob, welcome to Check It Out. Hey, thanks, Bill. How you doing? All right. Bob, uh, when, what inspired you to do the Buffalo Soldiers as a mural? Well, I'd been doing some writing about the Lincoln County War, Billy the Kid, all that, and um, I found out that they were stationed there. And in my research, as I began to get deeper and deeper into different facets of the Lincoln County War. And I started to find out about the Buffalo Soldiers, and uh, they were an amazing unit. In one of the books, I found these Frederick Remington drawings. And we took them, I took them into work, and I blew them up on the projector. We made a big pattern and pounced it out with the charcoal so all the figures were there. Okay, Bob, uh, for this particular work here, how long uh, did it take you? Well. I'd say there was about two solid days of work in here, but broken up over different periods of time. You know, we'd put on a base coat, we'd leave it alone, we'd come back. Um, we did like the main session was about a six hour session. Can you give us some a brief background of the Buffalo Soldiers? Well, okay, right after the um, Civil War ended and a lot of the blacks had been emancipated, Congress decided that they were going to start four units of black soldiers. There were two infantry units and two cavalry units, and the 9th and 10th were the two cavalry units. And there was a lot of debate about whether or not they'd be able to actually, you know, function since they were just free to slaves. And a few white officers got behind it, and they said they cut a deal with Congress, basically, that no blacks would be allowed to rise above the rank of sergeant, that all commissioned officers would have to be white. But white officers had a better chance for advancement by taking it on in this unit. And actually what happened was a lot of the white officers who joined this unit later had chances to leave and never would because there was a very, very strong bond between these men. There's 13 Congressional Medal of Honor winners from the Buffalo Soldiers alone. One of them's from Patterson, New Jersey, Sergeant George Watton. I mean, these guys were incredible. They were given the worst horses, they were given broken down guns, they were given all sorts of equipment that was discarded by other units. They worked miracles. It's pretty amazing, it's pretty excellent. Uh, Bob, what type of feedback have you gotten or have you received from, from your neighbors? People love it. and. Uh, these things have been up for years, some of them. They haven't been written on, no graffiti. We haven't had any problem with that. So, you know, all in all, I think people really enjoy it. And as long as they enjoy it and they support it, we'll keep doing more. When did you first start painting? Um, well, I've been drawing and painting all my life, but I became an artist officially in my own head right after John Lennon was killed in 1980. And my attitude was sort of, if they're gonna cut down one of us, two more of us are just gonna spring up. So my job is to train two more. And uh, I hope I'm doing it. Welcome back. We're just about a half a block away from uh, the Buffalo Soldiers. And we're here now with some work that Bob did and Bob, tell us a little bit about this work here. Well, uh, this is the Batman piece. This is like the circus comes to town here. I wanted, I just wanted to do something really big and tacky and flashy that had no socially redeeming value whatsoever. Here it is. It's so horrible, it's great. I mean, I really, I really love it. We got everybody. We got uh, Two-Face, Catwoman, Joker, Penguin, Riddler, Batman. A sort of uh, neo 21st century Robin up there with the space goggles on. Just had a lot of fun with this one, really went for it. And uh, actually, compositionally wise, I think this might be even the most interesting. There's sort of this, this figure eight going on with the characters, the way, you know, the way the eye is pulled. And uh, 
I thought it was more interesting than some of the other cartoon ones we've done where everything's just sort of lined up right in a row. What I really want to do is get a 30 foot high wall and do some dinosaurs, do a really nice Jurassic Park life-size dinosaurs, go for it the whole way. But uh, And maybe in the future, somebody out there wants to donate some scaffolding and some paint, we could get the sucker rolling. Now, Bob, you do uh, windows also. Yeah, for a living, I do a lot of um, Christmas and holiday windows for different shops. I do a few downtown Patterson. I do Filippo's Pizzeria on Washington Street. Yeah, and for those who go to Filippo's regularly, this is Bob. This is Bob. He does the artwork on the windows for Filippo's, and he does a great job. But uh, I've done indoor murals for uh, different restaurants and things like that. It's a lot of fun. I, mostly I sign paint. I mean, that's what I make my money at, which isn't always real exciting or interesting. But, uh, you know, it's a job. And I work for a sign painter in South Patterson sometimes. All I do is his artwork. He's got all these sign painters in there. But then, like, I go out of there and I make my living as a sign painter. It's kind of weird. Uh, uh, which one do you do more of, uh, murals or signs? Well, signs. Which one do you enjoy the most, though? Murals. Murals. Yeah, so you can't always have your cake and eat it, too. Okay, we're going to move over a little bit to Bob's next piece. We're now standing in front of the Crazy Horse. Crazy Horse, Mural, and Bob. Why Crazy Horse? I got respect for anybody who can do what he did and still manage to keep a sense of perspective. Uh, there's an old saying that a fanatic is a person who's constantly redoubling his efforts while losing sight of his original goal. You take a lot of Indian chiefs like Nana and Victorio and Geronimo. They used what happened to them as an excuse to go out and do the same thing to other people, just butcher and murder. Crazy Horse and his warriors fought soldiers. That's what they did. Crazy Horse never lost a single battle to the United States Army. And in the end, when it became a game of catching Crazy Horse and they were holding his people hostage, he turned himself in because he wasn't about playing the game. He was about trying to help his people. And he was doing what he had to do and what he felt he had to do. And when he saw that he was doing more harm than good, he stopped doing what he was doing. He came into a fort under a flag of truce and they stabbed him in the back with a bayonet because they couldn't deal with him any other way. They couldn't do nothing with him. He was too rough for him. And I'm trying to do what I can, as peacefully as I can, to make my statements through art, you know, that way. And uh, I hope that it does something. I hope some kid sees this and goes out and picks up a book about Crazy Horse and reads a little bit about him and maybe, you know, learns something that he wouldn't have learned otherwise. In a way, it's like we're trying to break holes. I'm trying to break holes into other times, you know, and uh, maybe with the mind somehow. So you could see, sometimes I think. I must go mad. <laughs> Ooh, let's move on. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. You called this one your cartoon... Cartoon cavalcade. Cartoon cavalcade. Yeah, well, I had done the crazy horse one, just sort of... Me and my friends were out here one day, and I was looking at the blank wall, and I was saying I'd like to do a crazy horse. And it took me two years to get around to doing it, but when I did it, then everybody was like, oh, let's do another one. So my friend said, you know, use the other side of my garage. That's how I look at it. I look at it like the circus is in town, you know? It's Dr. Bob's traveling art show. <laughs> and, uh, I like that. Yeah, we just come in, we take over, we do some art, and we get the hell out of there. And as I said before, earlier, murals can be used to advertise a business as well. This particular mural here advertises a hardware store. And Bob, you, you did this piece as well. Yeah, well, that was the only way we could get this wall was under the agreement that we put tools in it. So uh, that's what we did and tried to, you know, do as much as we could of what we wanted to do and do what they wanted at the same time. Um, this, I was going to use this wall for my dinosaurs, but uh, oh, it didn't okay. work out that way. Dinosaurs holding tools? No. No, dinosaurs slobbering <laughs> and uh, pounding the ground. Big, giant, full-size, life-size dinosaurs. What about a 30-foot Tyrannosaurus Rex going oh, on the side of this wall? Yeah. That's um, that's my next one. I don't know. This is uh, I think like number four. four. 
Cavalcade. Yeah, in the cartoon Cavalcade. It's the fourth one. Yeah, so we're getting a little kind of burnt out on the cartoon murals. But uh, got a little Lion King in there. Spider-Man, some Charlie Brown. He's got his Woodstock 94 t-shirt on. Me and my buddy were up at Saugerties this year. We had a nice time up there. Oh, so you went to check out the Woodstock. Oh, yeah, had a good time. It was a little R&R. &R. You know, the, the first thing you look for in a wall is that it should be in some sort of a public place. Second thing I look for in a wall is that you can get far back from it. You know what I'm saying? So I, when I paint a mural, I try and do it that it's interesting when you're up close because it has certain details in it, but it's also interesting when you're far away because it's got a certain composition to it. And I try to, you know, I try to like make it work on three levels, the far away, the close up, and the in between. So I try to find a wall that affords that sort of access also. And depending on the, the bigger the wall, the more space you need to move back from it. I mean, there's no point in painting a 30-foot dinosaur if nobody's going to be able to get 100 feet away from it. You know what I'm I saying? I got you. And we're going to move on. So follow us. Walk with us. Stay tuned. You know, Bob, I love cartoons. And I'm not ashamed to say it. And yeah, this, uh, this particular mural here, I think the first time I saw it, I was riding a bus. For the time being, we were at the red light, and I, all I can say was, "Wow, man, this this is this is excellent." Because you, everybody's here. You mentioned uh, about uh, the graffiti writers. Well, actually, they graffiti this one. You could see a little bit on the end there, with a couple of names, and uh, somebody added these sunglasses right here with a marker. But I think it's kind of interesting that they like artistically graffitied the piece. You know, instead of just trashing it with a name, they came and they worked into it. So, uh, whoever it is, well, you already signed your name. How long has this piece been up? Uh, since the summer, right? It's tricky. It's, it's you know, the trick is to take your, your art seriously while you're doing it and to do it as seriously as you can, but just to not take it too seriously in another way to where you get too you know, hung up on like how great you are or anything like that. I mean, because I'm really great, but I don't go around talking about it all the time. <laughs> I heard that. 